This episode is made possible by Drizzly. Busting out your finest glassware and hosting Friendsgiving this year? Need a last-minute gift that will impress the heck out of your Thanksgiving host and won't break the bank? Or just want to show someone how thankful you are? Do it all with Drizzly, the go-to app for drink delivery. With Drizzly, you can shop local stores from your couch, compare prices on beer, wine, and spirits to get the best price, and then get them all delivered. Can't make it home for the holidays this year? That's a bummer. Your fam's gonna be mad. Soften the blow a bit and show them some love by sending a drink to their door instead. And maybe promise that you'll be there for next year's Thanksgiving? Yeah. So download the Drizzly app or go to drizzly.com. That's D-R-I-Z-L-Y.com today. Must be 21 and over. Not available in all locations. Hi, I'm Yui Xu. And I'm Julie Krafchick. We're active daters turned dating sociologists. Here to dive into everything modern dating and relationships. Welcome to the Dateable Podcast. Hello, friends. It's brunch talk time where we answer your burning dating questions to the best of our ability. And we love the questions because... I've personally found them all very relatable. Absolutely. We've all been there at one point or another. And then the ones that I haven't been, I'm like, hmm, this is going to become a handy in the future somehow. <laughs> or maybe it won't. And that's okay. Because you know? <laughs> this will happen to me eventually. The one from today is one I've definitely experienced before. Here's the question for this episode. Why do exes leave breadcrumbs and still stay in your life? And for more context, my ex and I broke up because our relationship didn't work. Six months later, though, he's still reaching out and telling me he loves and misses me, even though he's dating someone new. Hmm. I still see him watching my IG stories. Why is he doing this? This is why I block all my exes so they don't even have a chance of leaving you breadcrumbs. But I remember going through this in my late 20s, early 30s. And just when you think you're over this person, it's like they can sense it. You know, they can sense (laughs) when you're turning the energy into something else beyond them. You're getting over them. And then they just do something like a deep like, a little DM here, there, a fire emoji, or something else as ridiculous as telling you that they still miss you even though they're in a relationship. Yep, I've definitely been there. And I think for a lot of people, I can't speak for all exes, obviously, but why do they do this is because they want to keep their options open. And they want to keep you around because you were an option that was a reality before. It's a much easier, much more familiar option for them to pursue. And sometimes when these exes get into a new relationship, they kind of freak out. They feel like, oh, okay, well, before I really commit to this person, I got to make sure that I'm getting all these other people out of my system. You're just nothing but roadkill in this situation, helping them understand their current relationship better. But it is so fucking dangerous to have these breadcrumbs because I know we can all read into them. Yeah. I mean, I think it just comes down to validation Mm -hmm. at the end of the day. Like people just want to know that they still got it. Even if they've hypothetically moved on, there is like the ego Uh that like knows that you're still interested in some way. So I think that is definite possibility. I think another piece too is when you're in a new relationship, oftentimes you compare to your ex. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times you're only remembering like the positive of the relationship Mm -hmm. too. It's like you've put them on the pedestal. And I think there's a big piece of that that could be happening here. Ultimately though, the why why doesn't matter in this case. Like we talk about the why so Uh often. And in a lot of reasons, I really do think it matters. In this one, it doesn't. You told us in your Apple review, this was a good Apple review, by the (laughs) way, you told us that the relationship didn't work. So that's all you need to know. And if you're okay moving forward with ending this relationship, as it sounds like you are, then who cares if your ex is still like lingering around doing this stuff? Do what you need to do to like preserve your own mental health and sanity around it. But I think analyzing why they're doing it is probably a bit fruitless. Yeah. If we were to translate this question, what you're really asking is, my ex has been leaving me breadcrumbs, even though he's in a new relationship, does he want to get back together? Is he still interested? That's the underlying intention of this question. And I get it. We all want our ex, whether the relationship went poorly or not, we still want our exes (laughs) to pine over us, right? It's like, it feeds our ego, it gives us attention, it feeds into our desire 
for familiarity. Yes, it does feel good to say, yeah, my ex is reaching back out because they still have feelings for me. But like you said, Julie, it doesn't really matter. Even if you are getting that validation from your ex, it doesn't matter because all it's going to do is going to remind you that this relationship didn't work out. This person is not the right person for you. And then it might bring you even more disappointment knowing that this person who is giving you that validation is not the person you really need validation from. Maybe the first question is to like look inward and say, why does this even mean anything to me? What am I getting out of yeah. this? Is it the validation? And why is that important for me to get it from the ex? I mean, I think it's validation on both sides. Like initially yeah. I started like the ex was getting validated, but I agree. It's like if you're the one asking this question, like there's probably a sense that you want the validation to know that you still got it and this person's still thinking about me. And I remember being in this situation and a little different in the sense that like I actually wanted to still be with this person. And maybe this listener deep down does too. We don't really know. And I remember he was still sending me, even though he was in a new relationship, he was still sending me all these like articles like randomly not even like saying i miss you but just sending like random tech crunch articles at the time mm. like so not romantic in mm -hmm. any way they weren't even like professing your love articles like but i was like oh what does this mean does this mean something that he's still lingering and i remember like actually like diving in to like deep google oh, searches no. on this because i really wanted oh, to get the God. answer and there was actually like one site i found way back in the day that was basically like this means nothing it's more about them than it mm. is about you for whatever reason they want to still know that like you're on the hook somehow and like by sending something out and you responding is giving them that validation and they're giving them that dopamine hit to know that like they still got it and it can be as simple as that like it might mean zero yeah that's very much true <laughs> and they have research proving that People don't fantasize about celebrities or people they haven't met. People like yeah. to fantasize about the people from their past because they can smell them, feel them, know what it's like to be with them. So part of the breadcrumbing from an ex is also part of like them fantasizing and probably mm -hmm. in a state of loneliness. Some people just get off on talking to <laughs> someone that they used to hook up with. So it's just like back to that article. It may mean nothing more than them just wanting to make themselves feel good. But yeah. the act of them trying to make themselves feel good can make you feel bad. So don't give up the mm -hmm. power to that. Don't even dive into the why because that's giving away your power to happiness. Don't let the breadcrumbing make you unhappy or disappointed or in this case, confused. You're wasting your brain cells on this person. <laughs> right. Right? right. There's really no need to dive any deeper into this. And you also don't need to do the deep Google search that Julie did because she already did that for I you. did it for yes. you. <laughs> don't worry about it. Take your hours back. <laughs> this is what we're here for. We're here to go through it so you don't have to go through as much right. as we've gone we did through. the legwork for you. <laughs> so I agree with you. I think like we're not going to keep analyzing mm. the why, but I do want to go into like, okay, if this is happening, what do you actually do mm. about it? Because that's a more fruitful conversation. Yes. So before we do, let's take a minute to hear from our sponsors. This episode is sponsored by Uncommon Goods. If you want to hear where'd you get that this holiday season, Uncommon Goods will accomplish exactly that. Uncommon Goods is here to make your holiday shopping stress-free by scouring the globe for the most remarkable and truly unique gifts for everyone on your list. Now, my parents are the hardest to shop for because we just don't really have a gifting culture in our family, but they love national parks. And I found a whole collection of national park themed gifts like tea towels, a park passport set, and even even park inspired candles. They're going to love it all. And when you shop at Uncommon Goods, you're supporting artists and small independent businesses. These fine products are often made in small batches. So shop now before they sell out this holiday season. And with every purchase you make, they give back $1 to a nonprofit partner of your choice. They've donated more than two and a half million dollars to date. To get 15% off your next gift, go to uncommongoods.com slash datable. That's uncommongoods.com 
com slash D-A-T-E-A-B-L-E for 15% off. Don't miss out on this limited time offer. On Common Goods, we're all out of the ordinary. Okay, so you get that call. I love you. I miss <laughs> you. You see them showing up on your Instagram. What do you do? Because I've definitely been here before. Like I've been here, you know, even in my current happy relationship that was happening to me. And I had to make some real firm lines of like, this can't continue. Mm. Like, I can't be getting these calls and conversations, and it's just disruptive to my current being. And even if you're not in a new relationship, I think that still holds true, because there's a reason you broke up, you're trying to move forward, and this person now is preventing you from moving forward. I wish that I would have asked for intentions. Yes. There was a circumstance in New York back in the day, six months later, you know, after breaking up, he reached out, wanted to go rock climbing with me. And I didn't stop to ask why. I just assumed he wanted to get back together. So I went into that get together with every intention of professing my love, which I did. I have really yes. missed this guy. And then he was like, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. No, it's not like that. <laughs> so I wish that I would have paused before accepting the invite to say, what's the intention here? Why are you reaching back out now six months later? It's so easy to tell someone that you miss yes. them and even that you love them. Yes. Like it's words. It doesn't mean anything. <laughs> it's fruitless. And the more action that can go behind it, I think it depends on where you are. Like if you're truly don't want anything with this person, then just shutting yeah. it down. And like if you need to block them, you need to block them. It's no longer because they're a bad person. It's just you're preserving your own self. But even just telling them, like maybe you don't have to go as far as block them, but just be like, hey, hey, like, we're, we both have this discussion to move forward. I'm not going to like entertain this. Like, yeah. that's so easy to say. And if you are secretly hoping that this means something, that's a different scenario. And if that's the case, I agree. Like, you can't just go in and hear, oh, I miss you and assume that they're going to come back and everything's going to be great, especially if they're dating someone else. Yeah. Like, there's so many steps now that has to happen. Yeah. I mean, I think what I would say in that scenario is like, great, you say you love me miss me what about the person you're dating yeah like, does your girlfriend know <laughs> and what do you want me to do with this information like if you really are serious about giving our relationship another try then i am down to entertain and have a conversation to see if that's feasible but until like there's something a little more concrete with a plan forward like we're not gonna have that conversation mm -hmm. And if you're savage enough, you don't even need to respond. I mean, if you no. are like, okay, whatever this person says, it's actually not going to be additive to my life, you don't need to respond because the moment you respond, you're doing exactly what they were hoping to get, yeah. which is communication yes. response back from you. But if you just like ignore it, pretend you never saw it, that's all you really need to do. A hundred percent. You don't owe someone an explanation no. on that, especially if they're now like stepping out of the boundaries. I don't know, again, what your arrangement with this person is. But if you said that you would be friends, mm. saying that I love and miss you is not necessarily falling into that. If you said that you would be friends and they're just looking at your Instagram stories, then I think that's a little different. Like what's the level that they're coming back at? Mm -hmm. There is a range here. But again, like if you decide it's too much for you, you could always say either just block them or delete them on Instagram. Like you can actually just delete people. Like you don't even have to block right. them. Right. They don't even have to know that they're now not on your right. feet. Like there's ways that you can do this that aren't so aggressive. And it's more just, I want to do what's right for me. Yes. Put yourself first. That's it. Simple. We've all been <laughs> here. It's really tough. Know that this is most likely just coming from a place of loneliness, validation, whatever it might be, that really might not mean anything. And until they're ready to give you something more, you need to assume it probably means nothing. Great question. And thank you for putting that in your Apple review for everybody else. That is the fastest way to get your questions answered is to put it in the body of your review on Apple Podcasts. Give us five stars and ask your question right there. <laughs> Super simple. And we will answer it right away. Other ways, if you want to do more traditional ways of sending in your questions, you can email us hello at datablepodcast.com or you can DM us on Instagram at 
at Dateable Podcast is the username. And if you're shy, <laughs> feel free to leave us five stars and send it in yeah. that way. And just tell us, I left you a review, left you five stars. We'll still yeah. bump it up. Whatever you need to do to give us that review. We've said it before. Reviews are everything in podcasting. Help us get to 1K. That's our goal by the end of the year. And remember to subscribe to the show so you get this the moment it drops. And then you also get our weekly Wednesday episode. All right. That's it for this week. We'll see you all next week for Brunch Talk. See you next week. The Dateable Podcast is part of the Frolic Media Network. Find more podcasts you'll love at frolic.media slash podcast. You can follow us on Instagram at Dateable Podcast and visit datablepodcast.com for access to all the episodes and our premium programs. Also, make sure to subscribe today if you haven't already on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcast platform so you are the first to get all the latest episodes. And most importantly, stay dateable. Thank you.